Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson six, graphs of linear functions and rate of change. Okay, so let's talk about that right there. Graph of linear functions. Well, a linear function in slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Rate of change is another word for slope. So we're going to substitute in rate of change for the m. And rate of change is the change in y over the change in x. Okay, that's a y. Okay. M, let me try to make that more legible. y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Okay, that's the slope of a line, or more specifically, a rate something changes. Okay, so the rate x changes with respect to y or, so, or vice versa will plot points on the same line. Okay, the rate of change, if it's constant, the amount of change from one point to the next will be the same, and that's what constant rate of change means. So we need a constant rate of change in order for that to be a linear function. Okay, so with that said, we're now going to answer this question. It says, opening exercise, a function is said to be a linear function if the rule defining the function can be described by a linear equation, hence this. Okay, function 1, 2, and 3 have table values as shown. So here's 1, here's 2, and here's 3. Which of these functions appear to be linear? Justify your answer. Well, in order for these to be linear, we have to have a constant rate of change. So if I try to find the slope between two points, then if I'm going to choose these two points, then this is my x input and this is my y output, independent variable, dependent variable. So we have two points here. This is point one and this is point two. So what this slope thing means here is if we take the slope of or the rate of change of y value of the second point. So this is point one, this is point two, this is the y value of the second point minus the y value of the first point, which is five, divided by the x value of the second point, which is four, minus the x value of the first point, which is two. And when I do that, I get seven minus five is two and four minus two is two, which equals one. Okay, so now that I've done that, I can't just say that the rate of change is 1. That's just between those two points. So if I have a point, and I have a rate of change of 1, and I go to here, but then I have a rate of change of 1 half, then it's going to do this. And then if I have a rate of change of 3 or something like that, it's going to do that. So every the slope of each segment is going to change, or the rate of change is going to change between points, and therefore it is not linear. So I've only checked this point right here so far. So I check between the first and the second point. Now I need to check between the second and the third. So if I check between these two, then I say slope equals y2 is now 8 minus y1 would be 7 over x2, which is 5, minus x1, which is 4. And 8 minus 7 is 1, 5 minus 4 is 1, and that also equals 1. So we still have a constant rate of change here. And now I'm going to check to see if these last two points would have the same rate of change between them. So if I say m equals y2 is now 11 minus y1, which is here at 8, divided by x2, which is 8, minus the x1, which is 5. 11 minus 8 is 3. And 8 minus 5 is 3, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. So since this has a rate of change of 1 between each of its points, then it has a constant rate of change. And number 1 is linear. Okay, so we're going to keep doing that with these. Now, as soon as you find a point that is different, or I'm sorry, not a point, but between two points, a rate of change that is different than another rate of change, between two other points, you can stop. You now you already know it is not linear, but you have to keep going until you find one that's not before you can say it isn't. Okay, so here we have two points, y2, so I'm gonna speed this up a little bit, 
y2, 9, minus y1, 4, over x2, 3, minus x1, 2, 9 minus 4 is 5, 3 minus 2 is 1, so the rate of change or the slope is 5. I'm going to do that again for the next two points, so I'm going to move this down to here. And now y2 is 16, y1 is 9, over 4 minus 3. Well, 16 minus 9 is 7, 4 minus 3 is 1, and that equals 7. So, since they're different, not linear. We don't have to check them all. We find two that are different. We are done checking. It is not linear. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for this one. Difference between the first two points would be y2 is 1. So the slope equals y2 minus y1 minus a negative is plus, And then x2 minus x1. So 3 plus 1 is 4. 1 minus 0 is 1. So the slope or the rate of change of this function is 4. So between those two first points, anyhow. So now I need to see if it's going to be the same for these two. Okay, so I say m equals y2, 6, minus y1, which is 1, over x2, which is 2, minus x1, which is 1. And that's going to equal 5 over 1, which equals 5. And obviously, 4 does not equal 5, so this is not linear because it does not have a constant rate of change. Okay, so there you have it. So now we have an exercise. A function assigns the input shown. Corresponding outputs given in the table below. Do you suspect the function is linear? Okay, so if I, then it says to compute the rate of change of this data for at least three pairs of inputs and their corresponding outputs. So we're doing the exact same thing. So here's the first one. So it's the slope or rate of change equals y2, negative 1, minus y1. Remember, these are x's over here, and these are y's. Minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. 2 minus 1 is 1, so we get negative 3. Okay. Now I'm going to check these two. So it's y2 negative 7, minus y1, minus a negative is plus, over x2, 4, minus x1, 2. Negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6, 4 minus 2 is 2, negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, over 1, or just negative 3. So, so far we have a constant rate of change going on here. We have to check the last one. Slope or rate of change equals y2, negative 13, minus a negative 7 is plus 7 over y2, 6, minus y1, 4. That will give me negative 6 over 2, and that is also negative 3. So, yes, this is a linear function. What equation seems to describe the function? Okay, so now we have an equation y equals mx plus b. And remember, we can't solve an equation unless there we're down to one unknown. We can find one unknown, but any more than that, we can't do it with one linear equation. So do we have a y? Well, of course we have a y. We have four of them. We have an x, yes. We have four x's. Do we have an M? Yes, we have an M. We found negative 3 all three times. So pick one point. Substitute in your Y. 2. Y. 2. M was calculated here three times. Saw that it was linear. So M is negative 3. X is 1. All we don't know is where that's crossing the Y axis. So now I solve this. 2 times 2 equals... Negative 3 times 1, which is negative 3, plus b. If I add 3 to both sides, I get 5 equals b. So I found b. So now my equation will be y equals my slope, negative 3x, plus my y-intercept of 5. So this is an equation of y equals negative 3x plus 5. So if I plug 6 in, 6 times a negative 3 is negative 18. 
negative 18 plus 5 is negative 13. So that prop point checked. Okay. So C says, as you did not verify that the rate of change is constant across all input-output pairs, check that the equation you found in part A does indeed produce correct output for each of the found part four individual inputs, 1, 2, 4, and 6. So they, they want you to take your equation and substitute in 1, 2, 4, and 6. So y equals negative 3 times 1 plus 5. And then I'm going to do it again, y minus 3x plus 5, or y equals negative 3x plus 5. So y equals negative 3 times 2 plus 5. I'm going to do an equation y equals negative 3x plus 5 again. Now my x is 4, so y equals negative 3 times 4 plus 5. And then finally, y equals negative 3x plus 5 one more time. Substituting in the 6 would be negative 3 times 6 plus 5. So when I do that, I get y equals negative 3 plus 5. So y equals 2. So I have the point 1, 2. Whoops. Erase a little more than I wanted to. Y. So I did it again. I need to think about what I'm doing here. Okay, I want to do an ordered pair. X was 1. Y became 2. Okay. Y equals negative 3 times 2 plus 5. Y equals negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. So when X was 2, Y was negative 1. This one is Y equals negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 plus 5. Y equals negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7. So that's the point 4, negative 7. And then finally, Y equals negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. Negative 18 plus 5. Y equals negative 13, which gives me the ordered pair 6 for X, negative 13 for Y. So I have 1, 2, 2, negative 1. So I look up here. There's 1, 2 at the top of the screen. 2, negative 1 is the second one. The third one should be 4, negative 7, and it is. So here's my point, and here's that point there. And then finally, 6, negative 13 is right there. So those four points do work, so my equation is y equals negative 3x plus 5. What will the graph of the function look like? Explain. Okay, well... It will be the shape of a line, y-intercept of the point 0, 5, and a rate of change or slope of negative 3 over 1. All right, so that is the end of Lesson 6. Review the lesson summary and go do your problem set.